sitting here and don't have a care in the world. You're not busy, and this season hasn't been hectic at all. Every gift was easy to find, and every family member has been unusually kind and generous this December. But then, there are the other 99% of you. Some of you just left the house and are trying to remember if you blew the candles out, the ones near the highly flammable Christmas tree that's getting drier by the minute. Uh-oh. Some of you are getting together with extended family members whose expectations are higher than Mount Kilimanjaro. Some of you barely made it to this service and within the last 60 minutes actually thought, maybe we should just skip it all together. So for all of us in here, I just want to remind you of what's really important. All that other stuff is important, but this one thing is way more important than anything else. So just breathe and take it in. 
She will give birth to a son, and you shall call him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means, which means God with us. Today in the city of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is Christ. He is Christ. He is Christ the Lord. That's what's really important. So wherever you're at, whatever you're in the middle of, and whatever is coming next for you and your family, we invite you to set aside this time to focus on Christ the Lord. Just breathe. And allow yourself to view this world-changing event with awe and with wonder. After all, God is with us not only in Bethlehem, but right here, right now. Amen. Welcome to Three Rivers Church and our annual Christmas Eve service. I am Pastor Ian, on behalf of Pastor Zane and Pastor Mark, we welcome you. We hope that you enjoy this service and receive uh, as much of a blessing out of it as we get uh, to participate. Reading from Luke chapter 2. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told to them. Will you pray with me? Father, what a gift that you have given us in your one and only begotten Son, born of a virgin, living a sinless life. Lord, this is the time of year that we celebrate that incredible gift that impacts eternity. Father, help us to understand the meaning of that gift, to receive it as our own. 
enabling us to live a life completely devoted to Christ. Father, I pray that you would look down on this service. I pray that you would bless those that are here, those that are watching, and that may we always remember your incredible love for us that is demonstrated through Christ. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Christmas. I'll tell you, there's uh, all kinds of things uh, about the years that goes by that we enjoy, and uh, Christmas is right at their top. We enjoy it so much, but I know um, the more you live life, Christmas we get excited about. For many times, uh, for many people, this uh, can be a sad time. Uh, Christmas is a mark on the calendar. It, it records that another year has gone by. And a lot of times it makes us remember things, doesn't it? And sometimes those memories are great and we smile, and uh, sometimes those memories are, are hard to bear. And uh, all that's wrapped up in this. And we like to do things, uh, we, we like to celebrate, we like to make traditions. And even w as we were singing and worshiping, I'm looking around and I see the festive clothes. And uh, I see the, the special shirts and sweaters, and I look around and We've got greenery and lights, and even the greenery and lights, uh, it's a tradition uh, to represent something. And if we're not careful, we allow tradition uh, to be so big that we miss even simple things like relationships. We, we've got all kinds of traditions set up for tonight, but I hope that tonight coming here together, this is a, a tradition that is at the top. Because it's just not a Christmas tradition. This is making sure that we are worshiping Jesus Christ. 
that we are making him the utmost. Paul reminds us in Corinthians, uh, because we need reminders. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he's reminding them about the Lord's Supper, about taking communion. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. He also, Paul gives a reminder that when we go through this Lord's Supper, that we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ and what he did for us, the price that was paid, so that we never, ever forget but he, Paul reminds us that we, we have to do this in a manner that is worthy of what is representing. So we're going to take part in the Lord's Supper. And before I invite the men up here, even though we've come to, to worship tonight, we've come to put Jesus Christ at the forefront, um, we're sinful men. So when we take the Lord's Supper, this is representing, this is just not a tradition we do. This is representing something that has changed our lives forever. And that is, we were told through a gospel message of who Jesus Christ was. That he came to this earth in human form to be a sacrifice for all mankind. Just as the song we just sang, to reconcile all men to God through his sacrifice. And he did that with his, with his body and his blood. And when we participate in the Lord's Supper, we are proclaiming, we are proclaiming that this belief that we put in Jesus Christ, this faith that we put in Jesus Christ, is the real deal. This is not a holiday tradition. This is a new life in Jesus Christ that we remember and we're reminded of the great cost that, that it took for us to have reconciliation with God I'm going to ask our, our men to come forward and as they're coming forward I want to remind you that if you have given your life to Jesus Christ and he is your Lord and Savior this is how we, we participate in this but if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ if you do not know him as Lord if you've never made the proclamation Jesus I will follow you I believe that you died on the cross for me and I believe that you were resurrected from the dead there's nothing to remember because you have not known it so I, I pray that you would know it tonight if you haven't it's so simple you, you just believe it and you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did for you and all the songs we sing about Jesus Christ, about the, our Lord and Savior and who he is and what he's done, it's just not a story anymore. It's a part of who you are forever in Christ. Father, we come before you. Lord, as we come together to celebrate Christmas, Lord, I pray that we would still our hearts and we would put you at the very top. Lord, that you would, your son Jesus Christ would be the centerpiece of our celebration tonight and tomorrow. And Lord, may we see Jesus in everything we do, from the lights that we look at and remember that he's the light of the world, from the gifts that are exchanged and remember that he is the gift that was given to us that we may have life in him and, and reconciliation with God. Lord, in all the relationships that we enjoy, understand that you are the creator of relationships and that you have given us the opportunity to have a relationship with you and your son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, as we celebrate, let us remember Jesus in everything. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
The scriptures tells us when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made. Lord, and we do remember. We do this in remembrance of you. And we know that you are the bread of life. And you are the life. You're the only life that we know. And apart from you, we have no good thing. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. In the same way, the scriptures say, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
small little cup we have represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was poured out for us for our sins and even though the disciples didn't even fully understand what was going on Jesus proclaimed that he was making a new covenant and we get to be a part of that and we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you in your name. Lord, we have taken time tonight to remember what it is that you've done. Lord, and in everything that we do tonight, we will remember you. In fact, Lord, may we remember you in not just tonight and not just this Christmas celebration, but daily. But Father, I pray tonight that you would open up our eyes extra wide. And all the festive red that we see, we would see the blood of Jesus Christ for what it is. The beautiful thing that has given life and reconciliation to all mankind. Lord, all the green that we see and all the festive clothes and decorations that we would see the everlasting life we have in Jesus Christ. Lord, in all the lights we see, the, the light of the world, the light that came into a very dark world, and the, the darkness could not overcome it. Lord, everywhere we look, from lights to, to colors to relationships, you're at the center of everything. You are our Lord. You're our Savior. You're our everything. And Lord Jesus, we worship you tonight. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas to you. It is good to be with you here tonight as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And I pray that we've all come together tonight with the express purpose of joining our hearts together in worship and adoration of our King to give to Him the honor and the glory that He alone is due. And I want to pause here for just a few minutes to get a glimpse of this King who was born some 2,000 years ago in the tiny town of Bethlehem. Matthew's gospel begins with the writer giving us uh, the, the lineage of Jesus, showing us the flow from Abraham through King David to Jesus, proving who this, who this man is. This is the one who has been foretold by the prophets hundreds and hundreds of years before his appearing. And just a few minutes ago, Pastor Ian, he read to us the Christmas story from from Luke's gospel. And Matthew, in talking about this very same story, Matthew, in Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, 
He says, all of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. In those two verses, Matthew points back to the prophecy of Isaiah, found in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, which says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. But understand, it wasn't just Isaiah. There were many, many prophets, hundreds of prophecies that told of this coming Messiah, in fact, Jesus fulfilled over 300 prophecies. Now, the probability of one person uh, fulfilling even just a handful of those prophecies is, is just this, this astronomical number, but, but hundreds, that's completely impossible. Impossible, that is, unless you are indeed the Son of God. And you see all through history, leading up to the birth of Christ and all the way through his life, God was working, directing the course of history, pointing to this child and saying, this is my beloved son. The Messiah had been foretold by, by the prophets for, for, for thousands of years, and there was such an anticipation in the nation of Israel Generation after generation of, of, the, of the people of God had been waiting and hoping for the, for the appearing of God's promised one. And so I asked Becky to sing that call to worship tonight, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, because when you hear a song like that, just think to the anticipation of God's people as they waited for Messiah, this one who had been promised to them. We know he's coming. God has promised he's coming. How long will it be? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. When we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate the birth of the promised one. This is a baby who is unlike any other in all of history. This is the king. This is the Messiah. This is Emmanuel. This is God with us. And in John's gospel, he gives us a beautiful picture of, of who this king is. It says in John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was in the light of man. And this light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light, the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own. And his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor out of the will of the flesh, nor out of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh. And he dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as the only Son of the, of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is who Jesus is. God, the Word of God, made into flesh, sent to dwell among us. This is what Christmas is about. Jesus coming to the earth, Jesus, the, the, the light, the light that came into the darkness of this fallen world, and the darkness cannot overcome this light. This light shines. It pierces the night. 
It illuminates the heart of men and those who receive this light by placing their faith in Him. They are given the right to become the children of God. This truly is the greatest story that's ever been told. Almighty God left His throne and He put on a robe of flesh. He became one of us. He came to this earth so that he could die, so that he could suffer and die to save us from our sin. Have you trusted in Jesus as your Savior? That's the question of the hour. This baby that we celebrate the birth of tonight. He didn't stay that baby in the manger. He grew up, lived a perfect life. And he died for us. So that you can have a relationship with God. Have you trusted in Him as your Savior? And if you haven't, what a perfect time this is. What a perfect time to ask Jesus to cleanse you of your sin and be the Lord of your life. What a, what a fitting moment to surrender to the one whom we are gathered here to celebrate. So if you've never trusted in Christ, I want to tell you, he stands with arms open wide and he calls to you. Come to me. All ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you hear him call? Will you answer the call? Will you come to Jesus? And if you've got questions, if you'd like to talk with someone, I tell you, I tell you, just catch me or Mark or Ian after church, after we get done tonight, we would love to sit down with you and, and, and share with you this story. We have time for you. This is the most important decision. So yes, Jesus... He wants to shine his marvelous light into the darkness of your life. That's what he came to do. He came to shine the light of God into the dark, into this hurting and hopeless world. But people of God understand that that is not where the story ends. Yes, Jesus is the light. But he gives his light to his followers and he gives everyone who has trusted in him Everyone who's trusted in him as their Savior, he's given them instructions. Listen to what the Lord says in Matthew 15, verses 14 through 16. He says, You are the light of the world. A city who is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that may, they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You see, it happens like this. One soul receives the light of Christ. And once you receive the light, you can't contain it. This light shines. This light, it, it, it penetrates the darkness and then it shines out to, for all to see. And when you're in Christ, you carry the light of Christ with you to others. And through that, the light of Christ is spread throughout the entire world.
want to soak up every second of that song. I'm so glad that you decided to uh, join us tonight and worship together. This is something you can't do unless you come together. And it's been great. Um, but we're going to depart from here. And when we depart from here, I don't know, just remember what we celebrate tonight goes with you. The light of the world, Jesus Christ, is in you. And he'll be in everything you do, not just tonight in your celebrations, but may we be gracious in our conversations with family tonight. May we be patient. May we be loving. May we be caring. And may we get our spiritual eyes open wide and just see the people that God has placed in our lives, whether it be the family with or the people we interact with. And I, again, I thank you for being here tonight. What a pleasure. And I will tell you, as you look around, isn't it awesome how just something simple like candlelight changes the whole atmosphere? What a great symbol. Of, that's what it's like. Uh, the light of Christ truly changes the darkness. And it doesn't just change it. It changes in such a way that it grabs people's attention and makes them just want to stay in there. Amen? Hmm. Yeah. Pastor Ian, Hold would on. you? Uh, Ian, Pastor Ian's going to do our closing prayer in just a minute, but I want to go ahead and give, uh, give instructions because what we're going to do is he's going to close us in prayer. We're going to sing one more song, a song of great joy. So we, we're going to leave this place singing joy to the world. So as soon as we get done with that song, you are dismissed. You can head out. Please extinguish your candles, not on the pew. And, uh, and there is a, a little basket right there at the door where you came in. You can drop them in. If you want to take your candle home with you, you can do that. Carry your candle. Shine the light of Jesus. But, but leave a dollar in the slot. Yeah. <laughs> but Pastor Ian's going to pray for us, and then we're going to sing, and you are dismissed. Thank you. It was good to be here tonight. Uh, if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to come and uh, worship with us on Sunday. We have Sunday school at 915, and our church service is at 1030. Uh, we'd love for you to connect with us at Three Rivers. So I hope you all have a wonderful Merry Christmas and a wonderful time together celebrating the birth of our Savior. Let's pray. Father, we are so, Lord, so grateful for that gift. Lord, I pray that each one that has heard the message that God loves us, God loves each one with such an everlasting love, not willing that any should die separated from an eternal God. Lord, you sent your only Son, so Lord, thank you. Help us to remember, get it ingrained in the very being of who we are, that it is Jesus who is the Christ, the Messiah, the strong Son of the living God. It is Him that we celebrate this day. As we live, leave this place, Father, may our light shine brightly to a dark world that desperately needs to hear the hope that's found in a living God. Lord, thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' magnificent name, amen.